Welcome back, everybody. We are on part four of the 2018 Smart Out Moment Awards. We are talking this time around on the On Air Personality Awards, where we will tout how great we are. Not necessarily. These are the other kind of broadcast teams uh, when it comes to WWE and other people that aren't on the broadcast side of things. We have like managers. We have authority figures. Uh, we actually have a category for just completely other extra type characters. Basically, anybody who is in some fashion a performer, yet not a wrestler. So, let's kick things off with the manager or valet, which your options for this year, unless I'm forgetting anybody, are Dana Brooke, when she was the statistician for Titus, uh, Titus Worldwide, Drake Maverick, Lana, Leo Rush, Maurice, Paige, at the beginning of the year, she was still with Absolution, Paul Ellering, for his, like, one fucking time that he was around with uh, Authors of Pain, Paul Heyman, and Zelina Vega, and I actually don't have on my list, but I uh, just caught myself right now, Maria Kanellis is also on there, so I need to add her into that, um... So those are your options. We've got the best and the worst here. My best is going to be Zelina Vega, mostly for what she had done with Andrade San Almas at the beginning of the year, because once they came up to the main roster, they haven't been used as much, but she still was completely uh, like the rejuvenate. Wait, I'm so tired that it's not the word. Uh, She rejuvenated uh, Almas and really made him a thing. So, um, rejuvenating spirit is what I was going to go for. My worst is Dana Brooke, uh, because I had mentioned before, statistician Dana Brooke. Really dumb fucking idea. So, uh, those are my picks. What do you guys got? What's the best and the worst manager or valet of 2018? My best is Selena Vega, because she did tremendously in NXT, and I still think there is a great upside to her on SmackDown, and I think we'll see that in 2019. My worst is Drake Maverick with the Authors of Pain because it it did not need to happen. They did it because they realized midway through their run that, oh, I think these guys need a manager. Well, they gave them Drake Maverick, and it did nothing but turn Drake Maverick, who was a decent GM who was just doing his job, into a... Uh, guy with a napoleon complex who likes to pee his pants so uh, i don't know if he likes to (laughs) well they certainly turned the negative into the positive (laughs) and made him start peeing everywhere so i'm going with he likes it so yeah (laughs) i think big show pops up and he's just kind of like oh yeah well i'm gonna piss myself (laughs) and i'm gonna fucking enjoy it (laughs) here you got callum um the best i would have done I've chosen Selena Vega, but her the pairing of her and Alma since coming to SmackDown has been such an afterthought that she's barely even registers, and she's she's she isn't really impactful as a manager anymore. She's just kind of there. Whereas I will go with Paul Heyman just because he does his job properly, and in a kind of era where they're trying to re- reincorporate managers back in none of them really do the job as well as Paul Heyman does for Brock Lesnar. And he's it's good to have that sort of voice there when Lesnar's hardly ever around. And worst, I'll also go with Drake Maverick because the choice of putting him with the Office of Pain and what they've done with him has eradicated a lot of the goodwill and credibility that he'd established for himself in 205 Live. Especially the fact that he had a babyface role and then he was playing a heel on TV and a heel that we didn't really need to have, and they could have really just picked anybody. I mean, I would have chosen someone, maybe like a Drew Gulak, would have made more sense. Um, yeah, he really give... like didn't even help Authors of Pain either. No, and I'd given an honorable mention as well to Lana, because like it, it's so disappointing or to see what those two have been reduced to now and. With the stuff that Aiden English and Rusev were doing earlier in the year, she felt like a really awkward third wheel. And at least kayfabe why she's the wedge that was driven between the two of them. So I, I kind of 
at least on a storyline perspective, have to blame her for that ending. So you're going to be singing we... uh, Lana is the second worst, Lana number nine. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that Lana and Rusev's character downgrade is the worst byproduct, byproduct of Total Divas so far? Because it really was their inclusion on Total Divas that made them completely just garbage on as characters on TV. I think it's it kind of just exposed Lana's actual personality, like CJ Perry's personality, which is a little bit not Lana. It it, it, it it can take some getting used to. And obviously it just gave her the excuse that she didn't have to put her accent on anymore. I'm glad she doesn't yeah. do the accent though. I might be the, in the minority about that, but to me it's just it never felt real. But she still does it though. <laughs> like she'll just when she says Rusev, she just puts yeah. the accent back on for some reason. Just like, hey everybody, today we're gonna be talking about Rusev and uh you know it's, <laughs> it's kinda like Rusev when too. I think he became a kind of a comedy character like this past Tuesday he called Shinsuke Sonic the Hedgehog. Like what what was that? I was somewhat right. He, he looked a little bit like Sonic. I don't know. Uh, this category might go away next year. It's the best and the worst celebrity appearance. It's gotten to a point where, even though it makes sense to have a separate thing like this, I kind of just don't feel like tracking the celebrities anymore. So if you have any uh, opinions one way or the other, or you think that we should keep it, or you think that it's cool to get rid of it, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but the only ones that I had been able to keep track of over the year was, um, Jimmy Fallon on Raw 25, Maria Menounos popped up twice, once at the Royal Rumble, once at the Hall of Fame, uh, Josh Dumal was on the February 27th episode of SmackDown to promote whatever that show was that he was on that, uh, oh god, what was the name of it? Um, Randy Orton with the, I think it was the thing with Biggie and all that. I think that oh, that's what right. he was promoting. Or maybe it was something else. I don't remember for sure. Uh, Kid Rock was in the Hall of Fame. We had Kane Hill and Lizzie Hale uh, take over New Orleans. We had Nita Strauss pop up a couple times. And my pick for the best was Terry Crews on the SummerSlam opening video package. I really, really liked that intro. My worst, I kind of just couldn't remember a lot of these things, so... I guess Jimmy Fallon on Raw 25, or maybe Kid Rock on the Hall of Fame. I, I don't really remember. I'll go with, not Echo, the Terry Crews. And I thought it was the only positive use of a celebrity, with potentially also like Lizzie Hale as well from the Take Up stuff. It, I mean, it's, it's a nice touch, especially when she was playing Ember Moon to the Ring. But. Yeah, it's not really a strong year for any sort of celebrity involvement from WWE. Um, my worst one, I'd go with um, Morgan Wallen, because I absolutely no idea who he is. Oh, that's and right, the tribute to the troops. Yeah, and he played a tribute to the troops, and that show's usually just a bit sucky anyway. And it's just, okay, they just bought this country and western guy who, and it might just be the fact that I'm not American, so I don't listen to that crap. But it's just a case of, like, who is this guy? Why is he taking up any sort of time on TV? We're American. I'm pretty sure we don't listen to it either. Well, yeah, uh, but it's, it's more your thing. No, it's country music. Fuck that. <laughs> it's, your, it's your culture. <laughs> um, how about that mullet on Morgan Wallen, huh? That... Yeah, that needs to go away. <laughs> my best, simply because it's the one that stood out the most in my mind was Maria Menounos at the Royal Rumble because the people are booing the shit out of her and she just on the microphone goes, I know guys I know, I agree <laughs> like, she knows she's enough of a fan to know that they don't want her in a featured role but WWE keeps giving it to her anyway and my worst I don't even remember this, but it sounds awful. So Jimmy Fallon on Raw 25. I just don't remember if he 
did anything other than sit kind of ringside and maybe laugh at something because it's Jimmy Fallon. Um, Honorable mention goes to Nita Strauss at WrestleMania playing Shinsuke to the ring. That was badass. I also forgot uh, John Stewart was on the tribute to the troops, so he's in there too. I didn't really let's, like any of his jokes, so it's... yeah. I like to forget since since his previous involvement with WWE, I like to just forget that John Stewart was ever is is a fan of WWE. It's probably a better world if that's the case. You think we'll ever see John Oliver on WWE television? Eh, probably not. Yeah, they probably barred him at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Colbert, I could see though. It'd be so, fun. So I think that I might be getting rid of that category next year just because... I hope you do. Fuck it. You know what I mean? It's just... I don't really care anymore. <laughs> One I'm not going to get rid of, though, is even though, you know, they might end up uh, making it hard to make this a category next year, is the best and the worst authority figure, which incorporates general managers, commissioners, constables, technically. We have... Alexa Bliss, Constable Baron Corbin, or General Manager Elect Baron Corbin, whatever you want to call him, Daniel Bryan, Drake Maverick, Johnny Saint, Kurt Angle, Paige, Stephanie McMahon, Shane McMahon, Triple H, Vince McMahon, and William Regal. Unless I'm forgetting anybody, but I don't think I am. So my uh, best is William Regal, because he is the most believable out of everybody. He goes out there. We've been saying this a lot lately when we've been referring to general managers, which is he just does his job. And oh, yeah. they incorporated him a little bit more into this whole who attacked Alistair Black type thing. And it wasn't some stupid storyline where it was like, actually, it was William Regal and he orchestrated the whole thing. No, he was just sort of like, look, I had a fucking business to run. Did you attack him? No? Okay, well then, go wrestle your fucking match, and, like, different things like that, so... I like Regal a lot in that capacity, but, unfortunately, as much as I can praise NXT... NXT UK! <laughs> Johnny Saint, man, um... I have no connection to Johnny Saint to try to be like, ah, oh, that's great, you know, some legend or whatever. That four-man fatal. <laughs> that, that was enough for me to just be like, ugh. He just doesn't strike me as somebody that wants to do this type of thing is good at it anything like that he, he might be a legend okay but just because you used to do something doesn't mean that you can do all the aspects of it same as how like you know ted dibiase wasn't a good commentator he was a good talker but not a good commentator johnny saint's not a good general manager in my mind who is sid scala the, the sidekick guy. Do either of you watch NXT UK? That's probably a better question. I cursory watch it. Like, I really honestly don't pay much attention to it. But he was a wrestler, and I think he got injured, so they were trying to figure out something to do with him. Mm, okay. Uh, so I, did, me, the... I totally did forget to add him into the list. Since for me, Gata. the best... By far, is William Regal because the man does his job. And what more can you say? Honorable mention goes to uh, Alexa Bliss just for how she looks. And worst constable, not constable Corbin. I like the constable thing, but when they made him general manager, it just it dragged, man. Just not very good at all. And Runner up for worst, and I'm glad they seem to be stopping this character. Heal Stephanie McMahon. You know, it, it was so annoying to watch her be a heel, be a face, and then go back to being a heel. I hope that they truly do stick to their word and have, you know, neutral McMahons just making matches. Uh, best for me. Echo the same response, William Regal. Just love the role that he does in NXT. He's a beloved figure in British wrestling and wrestling in general. He's going to be a great like right-hand man for Triple H going forward. And, yeah, he's just great at what he does. With an honorable mention, also going to Drake Maverick, because 
he's so desperate for people to love 205 Live. <laughs> and he loves to present, like, like just the matches and show how important they are. Like, his role as the general manager is infinitely better than his role as manager of AOP. He might have gotten an honorable mention for me, but they ruined the character by making him such a, you know, weird heel on Raw. Mm -hmm. That think, ruined it for think, me, too. I think, I think I'm able to differentiate enough between the two of them. Just I, I kind of just look at the AOP thing and think, okay, that's just something stupid that they wanted to do, and I'll just try and dis keep the distinction between him being his general manager. Because general, well, being general manager of 205 Live is saying that Triple H runs through with him because Triple H is in charge of that, whereas the raw stuff is Vince and try and, try and keep them distinct. And the worst I'm giving to Queen of All Women, Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> because not so much just for her role as like the authority figure on Raw, but the idea that she is the spokeswoman and the creator of women's wrestling. And that and even on like this past edition of Raw, where all the women are arguing backstage because they can't decide which one of them is going to fight Ronda Rousey next or get a shot. So she marches them all out single file to the <laughs> ramp, stands with the opposite side and says, you guys are going to have like this match for it and I'm going to pick you to go first in the gauntlet and you to go second and you can't argue with me because I'm the queen and I can fire you as soon as like as soon as you look at me the wrong way. So even if she's going to be a baby face now, the fact that she's still presented as like the woman's spokesperson and it just says like she's meant to be promoting women's empowerment and the only woman that she's actually empowering is herself. I find I like, that quite despicable. I like the phrase the queen of all women, <laughs> Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that says her on a business podcast. <laughs> so let's move to you could call this a lot of different things, ancillary characters, extra characters, other characters, oddball characters, whatever you want to call them. They're just these miscellaneous additional things. You know, we've got a lot of variety. I'm not going to write them all down. They're on the website if you want to check them out. But this is something like the people that are in the conga line for No Way Jose's entrance or... And I try to keep track of literally every single one of these people throughout the year. So I've got people written down like the the guy who says, I just work concessions on the June 25th episode of Monday Night Raw. The valet who doesn't have Kevin Owens' keys on the 25th episode of Raw uh, for the June. Dr. Shelby. The documentary film crew for Elias. G. Ambrose, who is a cop. The fans asking the questions in the open forum. We've got Queen Rebecca. We've got uh, extras in the entrances for WrestleMania. The guy who gives the cake to Braun Strowman. Like, there's, you know, tons of different things here. So, my worst is something that we talked about earlier. Bobby Lashley's sisters. That was just horrendous and stupid. And I didn't like anything about that whatsoever. My best, I am leaning between these two different options um, because there really weren't a lot of good options this year. So I'm either going to give it to Mr. Bootyworth for just being a dude that stands there with pancakes. And you like, know who that was? It's a Foley's kid, right? Yep. Yeah, so it's like, sure, fine. Or maybe Todd the Cheeseburger... For some reason, I have that written down. Just, <laughs> like, I don't know why that stands out to me. Uh, but maybe, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go with Vanguard 1. Because <laughs> <laughs> at least Vanguard 1 does his job. But I will say one thing. There has been a running joke in the awards after two different years had gone by where I gave the worst to uh, kids. So I'm going to make a separate special extra worst thing for King Maxwell and Lord Wolfgang and Nicholas because we had three fucking kids this year. <laughs> Nicholas actually would have been potentially one of my best, though. But he gets the worst just because he's a kid. <laughs> I like King Maxwell, you know. I, he's a good kid. But... My best, because he's the only memorable one to me, is Mr. Booty Earth. And I thought that was very funny. Even though it was very Looney Tunes, 
what they were doing with the New Day for that brief period of time with the Miz and the bar. But I got a laugh out of it, so, you know, why not? My worst... Bobby Lashley's sisters are up there, and I would have given it to them, but we were promised some therapy sessions with Bailey and Sasha, and we got one week of Dr. Shelby, and then the next week it was just some random woman who never said a thing. So that is my worst. Random woman who doesn't say a thing? (laughs) Random woman doctor who didn't say a thing during Bailey and Sasha's therapy. (laughs) Extra that got paid to sit in chair. You know what, the bonus shout out on the positive end to the to the extra guy that got powerbombed through a table by the Dudley boys. When did that happen? Hall I don't have that on my list. Wow, I don't have that on the, on the list. I totally don't remember about that. Uh, I'll start my worst because I had down as the worst ones uh, like just on my list, like the Bailey and Slasher Banks therapists, the... Um, I had Mr. Bootyworth down as one of my worst because I'm sick of the pancake gimmick and it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. And I also had the uh, Melibration people that were involved in like the um, like the town crier yeah. and <laughs> people taking it down to the room. But I actually went for the worst, the um, fan plant plants in the Q&A. Not yeah. so much just because like, like, those segments were like deaf anyway, but it was the questions they were asking were just so like... Like these are the it, it just gives the impression like these are the sort of questions they think fans would be asking them, and they were just like, "Oh, which superhero power would you have?" Or, "Wow, what is your plans for the rest of the year or ever? Or what do you envision doing?" Or something like that. It just shows how <laughs> stupid they think we are. I'm super nervous right now, but uh, yeah. Do you guys want to fight Trish and Lita? It was like, okay, I. For me, I got the vibe of if I'd have taken that internship, this is what I would have been doing. I would have been handing out uh, "We Want Women's Tag Team Title" signs and this. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then for the longest time this year, my choice for the best extra was the chocolate cake guy during the Braun Strowman rampage, yeah. just because the, the the face that he holds and he just like holds the same pose the entire time, and then Strowman just takes the cake, looks but it's just. It was just a really, really funny moment. But I decided to actually go for something that happened quite recently. And I'm going to go for the security guard that took down Enzo Amore in the um, Savannah (laughs) series. (laughs) Because that was also my choice last year, because that is the same security guard that almost stopped Gronk getting into the ring. Oh, really? Oh, shit. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. And I want her to be her own character (laughs) on TV. (laughs) There you go, women's division. Yeah. I'd I'd be happy with her taking the toe off uh, Rousey. That'd be work. Does anybody remember who Ricky Roberts is? Must have been a job guy. August 13th. Well, I don't usually um, write down the enhancement talent. So... Ricky Roberts, August 13th. I I usually write with context. Like it's this deadweight guy who always FaceTimes his kids at work who gets fired by Baron Corbin on uh, the... I, I you just know. searched it quickly. He was um, Elias' biggest fan. Oh, uh, okay. And so he, like, he, he hit Bobby Lashley over the back with a guitar and then got attacked afterwards. So he is okay. like a job. He's probably just like an enhancement talent, like a local talent there. But yeah, but... I wouldn't say his thing was any particularly memorable. Okay, I just was like, you know, I don't remember that name, and I only wrote it down as Ricky Roberts, which is just sort of like, huh. Um. So, a uh, little backstory. I'm watching the chocolate cake Braun Strowman thing, because I don't recall this at all. I don't know when he was fired or why, but this is hysterical. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> that chocolate cake thing was one of my favorite things at the beginning of the year. It's just kind of like, let's throw people around backstage and all that, and then I'm going to eat your goddamn cake, too. And then later on in the year, they did a thing with Elias and a chocolate cake, where somebody was walking by, and he's like, yeah, go ahead and put that in my room. (laughs) Which is just like, somebody backstage is just like, I find chocolate cake funny. Let's incorporate this as much as possible. (laughs) You know what? After watching this segment, honorable mention to this guy, because he keeps the same face. That is... (laughs) fantastic 
move over to announcers. And for the people that, for some reason, think announcer means commentator, it doesn't. It means the people announcing things. I, that's one of those stupid things that gets under my skin when people are like, Jim Ross was one of the best announcers. He wasn't an, an announcer. He was a commentator. Jim Ross never came out there and went like, coming to the ring is what, no, 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 no. So we have Andy Shepard, Christy St. Cloud, who was eventually released, Greg Hamilton, JoJo, Caleb Braxton, Lillian Garcia, who popped up a couple times throughout the year, Maria Menounos, technically, because she was that uh, role in the Royal Rumble, Mike Rome, and Sarah Schreiber, who is not Zara Schreiber, which is very, like, come on, kind of a thing, you know what I mean? Uh... I will give a slight, slight edge to Mike Rome, just a bit above Greg Hamilton, because they're the two most reliable people, I think. JoJo bugs me, and how she kind of like, it seems like everything that she's saying, she has to really kind of struggle to get that last little bit out. In particular, like when Roman Reigns, she'll be like, Roman Reigns! And this is kind of like, everything is just sort of, Kevin Owens, like, ah, I can't quite get that last name out. It, that bugs me. And as soon as I noticed that, it just threw me off. My worst is Christy St. Cloud. And she was pretty much just as bad as Caleb Braxton. I don't like her at all on that, uh, in that kind of capacity. I haven't heard Sarah Schreiber, but between Christy and Kayla, Christy actually got fired. So, yeah, you know, she the slight edge with that. So. <laughs> I hate it when they take, they seem to do this a lot when it comes to the women in NXT, where it's like, we're going to bring you on as some kind of a backstage interviewer, but can you also do announcing work? And it's like, you need to get people who are announcers to do the announcing work, not just, you're a good looking girl, why don't you go up there and try to be that too? No. Hire people for the jobs that they're supposed to do. Caleb Braxton is fine for the backstage interviews. Don't put a mic in your hand and have her introduce people, you know? But they have to save money for all the pyro they use all the time. And, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and the change into the sets they make all the time and stuff like that as well, you know? <laughs> yeah. Not a fan. Who you guys got? Uh, best is my Chrome for me as well. Again, it was close between him and Greg Hamilton. I think they both did their job reasonably well, but I think Mike Rome makes a bit more of a production about it, which I like. Uh, worst, I went with Caleb Braxton, mainly because there's there's just a lot of the announcers are just very generic and not particularly good. JoJo was also high on the worst list because, yeah, like like you say, I don't like the inflection in her voice when she says when she announces certain people. It just like in this case, like she's a good looking girl and she's obviously was training to be arrested beforehand before getting into this, but. Maybe there's something else that she would be could be slotted into rather than this role, and they'd get someone who's a bit got a bit more projection in their voice to be an announcer. Where would I know Mike Rome as far as like being a ring announcer? Because I know he does a lot of the backstage stuff. NXT, and he pops up for certain things like uh, he did the Saudi Arabia shows. I'm pretty sure because they couldn't, you know, for some reason do JoJo and all that. Did he do the ring announcing for the first war games? Uh, can't tell Girl's you. Girl's a lot of us there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, my best is Greg Hamilton because he does his job very well, and I'm sure Mike Rome does as well. I trust your guys' opinion. My worst because I haven't heard a lot of uh, Kayla or Christy. It, it's JoJo. I don't. I don't care for the way she announces things. She always sounds constipated. She's got this like just weird way of announcing things. And honestly, that's been a thing for a lot of the female ring announcers in WWE. Lillian got better at it over time, but I think she's the exception, not the rule. And yeah. It bugs me that it almost feels like WWE tells these people the best way to announce things is to come off as if you were pretending to be excited instead of just being an announcer. Like nobody touches Howard Finkel. It's just, nobody's come close to that. 
the only person that I think, actually, the only two people that have made me feel like they were good enough that if you don't have think, these people will do, were Tony Schimmel and Justin Roberts. And it's because they just had the right voices for that type of stuff, and they didn't kind of force things as much. And Justin Roberts kind of did every once in a while, but uh, I don't know. They seemed to get it a little bit more, and even Lillian, she does do that. She kind of just seems like it's like, this is the part where I'm supposed to sound excited at the end of announcing this, instead of just being excited or... Fucking, if Howard Finkel didn't feel excited about something, he still made it sound like he was just announcing them fine, you know? Gold dust! It's like, yeah, he doesn't give a shit about gold dust, but you're just kind of like, all right, cool, gold dust is coming out. You know? I'm surprised they don't specifically look for and hire people with, like, you know, voiceover work and talent, like, things that specifically are in the talent of using your voice rather than saying oh well, we hired jojo for total divas that didn't work out what can we do with their ring announcer <laughs> yeah that's one of their go-to things is just we'll put them in some kind of broadcast capacity they could be a commentator they could be an announcer they could be an interviewer whatever we'll figure it out and then they don't figure it out and then after a certain amount of time they release them like they did with christy and at some point they'll probably release kayla at some point they'll probably release tyra you know and then they'll bring in four more generic 20 something year old women and do the same thing all over again the way that they do like every single year which is just kind of bring fucking kennedy back have him do the announcing work that's okay (laughs) (laughs) i like i think he'd be good at that capacity Let's go to the broadcast correspondent, though. These are the people that are on the interview side of things, as well as the pre-show panel, the people that do shows like we were talking before about, like, Afterburn and all that. So, like, Scott Stanford, that's his role. Kathy Kelly hosts uh, WWE Now, so on and so forth like that. So, real quick breakdown of these. You got Booker T, Byron Saxton, Kathy Kelly, Charlie Caruso, Christy St. Cloud, Dasha Fuentes, David Otunga, Jerry Lawler, Yamena Sanchez... Jonathan Coachman, Kayla Braxton, Madonna Tixera. I don't know who the fuck that is, but she's somebody. Maria Menounos, Mike Rome. Don't know how to pronounce this person's name. Uh, then we got Natalie Mamo, Pat McAfee, Peter Rosenberg. Don't know how to pronounce that person's name. Renee Young. Don't know how to pronounce that person's name. Sam Roberts, Sarah Schreiber, Scott Stanford, Shadia or Shadia Seso, and Veronica Rodriguez. So a lot of these people... Nobody even knows who the hell they are, I'm sure. I don't know who the hell they are. Uh, but they host things like Sunday de Mall and, you know, whatever. So I can't really judge them because <laughs> I've never seen, like, Veronica Rodriguez do anything. So she might be terrible. She might be fine. Fuck if I know. Uh, this was almost a three-way tie for me because Charlie Caruso, Renee Young, and Kathy Kelly are all really good. I eventually decided that This year, I kind of feel like Charlie Caruso was the best. And that's a little tough because Renee Young almost got it again for me. She's kind of the standard bearer. But I think Charlie, she did something a little bit better this year, maybe. My worst, as much as I think Christy St. Cloud was just sort of there and that's it, she's still just not as bad as David Otunga. (laughs) David Otunga just sucks. So, I would go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Um, I was gonna say the best. I was gonna give it to Charlie Crusoe, but then I listen to obviously a lot of wrestling related podcasts, and they point out something that's very at, like apparent to me is the fact that she's often the backstage interviewer for Raw, and the questions she asks are so stupid. <laughs> they make and it's, it's stuff that's ri- that's written for her, but. It's just like such obvious questions, like like a question that we should ask Seth Rollins after Dean Ambrose attack says, Seth, are you going to go back over after your Intercontinental Championship? It's like, of course he fucking is. Why don't you ask him a real question? <laughs> it's like, oh, how do you feel after losing that match? It's like, how do you think he feels after losing that match? It's like, Fantastic. Yeah. It's just like, 
they need to get start giving and it's not just charlie but they need to start giving all of their backstage interviewers better questions or more meaningful questions than the ones that they're being asked but so in that case i'm going to give best to kathy kelly yeah she, she does a better does job all... in the nxt side of things yeah yeah i think she does and i think she does like the hosting stuff that she does through WWE youtube and stuff like that very well as well so good on kathy uh, oh, I'll say my worst as well. Uh, going to leave that for a second. Uh, worst, it was between two for me. Jonathan Coachman, I hate Jonathan Coachman. Like, <laughs> he's such a, like, somebody who thinks that he's above professional wrestling and is so, like, probably still angry at himself that he has to do it because he sucks at his other job as well. So he's had to resort to coming back to a place that originally made him famous, and now he's even worse at that than he was beforehand. But I'm going to give the worst to Pete Rosenberg. He just comes across as a real dick all the time. And like, oh, I'm I'm one of the people, I'm like a big wrestling fan. And it's like, so I'm really excited for this sort of thing. It's just like, yeah, I hate the fact that I'm associated with you, that you like this thing. It makes me feel worse about liking this thing. Yeah, so definitely worse for Pete Rosenberg. Um, I didn't know we were considering the... Uh, outside sources like the Sam Roberts and the Peter Rosenbergs. Um, honorable mention on that side goes to Pat McAfee. <laughs> I figured you were going to get to that. You like Pat who McAfee. Is, who is just incredible. Uh, full time, though, my best, I have to agree with Callum. It's Kathy Kelly. She did phenomenal this year. Did a lot of really cool stuff going towards evolution as well. She did a great roundtable with Tony Storm, Sasha Banks, and Trish Stratus. She does a great job on Talking Snack and WWE Now. So I really like Kathy's work this year. You my convinced worst. me. I'm switching it over to Kathy Kelly because she was yeah. one of my one of my three. So, yeah. All right. We got a trifecta, Kathy Kelly. Uh, worst. Yeah. Going to echo Callum again. Coach. I don't think Coach thinks he's above wrestling. I do think he's forgotten what wrestling is and he spent a lot of time especially on commentary being like well in the real sports world we call this uh and it's like coach it doesn't matter you're calling pro wrestling and he's my word of the hour is irrelevant (laughs) which is what he is so does anybody know if uh the new girl Alicia Taylor is she an announcer an interviewer or both she's gonna be she's gonna be an interviewer on TV, probably a, r- a ring announcer at the house shows. Huh. Okay. Well, I don't think she's debuted yet, so. She she started doing the live events. Okay. So, not on TV. Uh, We'll see. Maybe she's going to be great. I don't know. I think she's going to be good. She's a drummer or something, right? Yeah. So, maybe she's got some kind of musical talent. Maybe that'll be good for the announcing side of things. They need more on the announcing side than they need on the backstage interviews. Especially if they're going to keep doing that stupid, like, stare off into oblivion and shit. I uh, miss uh, Philip doing the ring announcement, uh, not the ring announcement, with, like, the backstage interviewing. He was fun. Good old, uh... Wait, no, that was the whole thing with Tom and, uh, Mike, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Let's go to the commentators. Uh, This is the last for our on-air personality awards, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the commentators. So this incorporates literally all the ones if you want. You know, you can technically say you really love uh, Funaki because he is a commentator that's there for every pay-per-view. He's on the Japanese team with uh, Shun Yamaguchi. We've got plenty of different names there. Sean Dang and Meng Ai and... Uh, Karsten Schaefer, Jerry Soto, you know, uh, all the different people like that. Um, which I always like seeing Ray Rougeau pop up because I was always just kind of like, ah, oh, it's cool that he's still around. And Carlos Cabrera and all them. But as far as the American side of things, the people that you should be aware of are Beth Phoenix. Oh, before I clarify too, these are the people that are people that did it on more than one occasion. Not like... You know, Stephanie McMahon was on the Royal Rumble for, like, one match. No. These are the people that are, like, Beth Phoenix did the Mae Young Classic. She did every episode of that. So, she's on there. Booker T has been filling in here and there. Byron Saxton, Corey Graves, Jerry Lawler, Jim Ross, Jonathan Coachman, Mara Ranallo, Michael Cole, Nigel McGuinness, 
Percy Watson, Renee Young, Tom Phillips, and Vic Joseph. Pretty sure that that's it, but again, if I'm forgetting somebody, let me know. I almost went with Michael Cole again this year. I've been giving it to Michael Cole pretty much every year, but uh, one thing made me completely change my point of view about it, which is they started releasing video footage of Mauro Ronaldo at takeover events. <laughs> And when he goes absolutely crazy over things and he's like practically having an orgasm in the chair and he's just like, oh my God, there are no words. And you can see him like the look on his face when he's this, you know, nervously bouncing a pen, a uh, pencil up and down because he's just like waiting for, you know, Adam Cole to hit some kind of a move so he could be like, it's a three stage plancha off the way. Like this dude fucking loves his job. And I... I like listening to him, you know, he's, he's so over the top, ridiculous. He's like, if you mixed Jim Ross with, uh, what's his face from ECW? Joey Uh, Styles. Joey Styles. Yeah. Like the over the top ridiculousness of Joey Styles and the super excited Jim Ross, but with the legitimacy of Jim Ross. So Marvin Allen gets my best. Uh, my worst though, I could have given this to so many people because really, I don't think Beth Phoenix is good. Booker T is just, a, you know, he's always been just kind of a joke. He's fun, but he's a joke. Byron Saxton is okay for a punching bag, but meh. Uh, Coach isn't all that good. Nigel McGuinness, I think, sucks. Percy Watson isn't good at all. And David Otunga popped up a couple times and he's bad too, but... I think I have to lean more towards Percy Watson over anybody else because I feel like he never says anything that really matters. And if you didn't have Percy on there, it wouldn't change the dynamic whatsoever. He pretty much just says, yeah, wow. And that's about it. So, sorry, Percy. I wanted really badly to like you when they first announced that you were coming back, but it's just not your thing. For me, my best is Maranawa because as you said he you can tell that he's actually enjoying what he's doing and I think you would get that feeling with Michael Cole if he wasn't the actual voice of the company and therefore made to be the robot for like whatever plugs McMahon and Kevin Dunn and whoever else tell him to get out there um, honorable mention on the best side goes to Corey Graves. I think he's really hitting a stride. Just the last couple of weeks alone, he's been very funny. And I also want to say, as a unit, I think Saxton, Graves, and Phillips are the best three-man team that they have. But Maranalo by far is the best. And I would also say watch out for Vic Joseph. I think he's a guy who could maybe to take over for Cole one day. On the worst side, uh, it was either it was going to be either Coach or Percy Watson, and I went with Percy Watson just because I think he's just there to be there. I think they fell into this weird pattern, which was only changed with Renee Young, of you got the, the analyst play-by-play, you've got the heel former announcer and then the quirky black guy in the middle and i'm not being funny that's no it's it's really an odd thing that they did because they had byron they have percy they had uh booker coach Coach. otunga kind of played a little bit of that role not necessarily 100 percent the same kind of capacity but they really kind of did seem to have some sort of agenda when it came to that it was really strange it was a coincidence maybe but it was sort of like, it's too, a pattern. It's too much of a pattern to be a coincidence. And honestly, I think Percy Watson, while he seemed to be charismatic in his showtime role as a wrestler, he sucks at commentary. He just, I, I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't click for me. I don't dislike McGinnis like you do. I think it's really Percy is the weakest link of the bunch. And yeah, never did anything for me. I was going to like potentially say maybe the reason why Tony's not going for Michael Cole this year is because he realises that when the only time that Michael Cole isn't shilling 
like company catchphrase what well, company like plugs or saying lame catchphrases he's sucking Vince McMahon's dick so, so that's, the, <laughs> that's the only thing that he puts his mouth to use on but so it has to be Mauro Ranallo it's, it's interesting because I usually like give like really long lists of like potential choices for these uh, categories but the only one I had down for the best commentator was Mauro Ranallo because 90% of the commentary teams in WWE just aren't very good and this is extended to everybody. The only ones that I'd even put close to Mara Ranello are Nigel McGuinness, uh, Vic Joseph, and even Todd Phillips. Then I don't. I wouldn't even put Corey Graves there. He's really started to get on my nerves with his commentary because he just he's somebody that I think has grown tired of what the fans say about things, even if though they're just saying the product sucks because it does suck. And so he's he's slowly transitioning from oh I'm the edgy alternative guy to oh I'm going to pretend to be the edgy alternative guy but I'm just going to s- promote everything that WWE does because I'm just a, a corporate shill. Um, overall worst I'd give to Jonathan Coachman because even though I agree that Percy Watson is the least like effective commentator and offers the least amount, I'd rather have someone that's offering nothing to somebody who's like constantly detracting from the actual product and the stuff that Jonathan Coach was saying like calling moves that weren't actually moves or saying that like I, f- I remember one incident in particular where I think it was the Ronda Rousey Nia Jax match from Money in the Bank where Nia Jax had Ronda Rousey in a bear hug and Jonathan Coach said well this is just giving Ronda Rousey more time to recover yeah I, like, I do remember fuck? that it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah yeah it's, yeah it's a rest hold Jonathan, Jonathan, we know this, but we kind of like try and pretend because it's wrestling and take your stupid sports journalism and like take it out the door. And but I would also say that, like, combined, even though Jonathan Coachman was the worst overall, I'm glad that he's not commentating anymore. I would say, like, the worst actual commentary team was the team behind the Mae Young Classic, even though I absolutely adored the show and the actual wrestling and the production behind it, the commentary was terrible throughout yeah. and that was prime and i would say that's primarily michael cole's fault because he was too because i don't think michael cole knew who any of these people were and it felt like and that may be the case with beth phoenix and renee young as well but it felt like they were all just reading off sheets saying oh we have an interesting fact about this person and then just looking down at their sheet and just sat repeating it it's you want to feel like they're invested in what they're doing rather than they just turned up that day and were given a list of people's names and a list of facts and just reading off during the day. But I'll still give worse job for Coachman. <laughs> because hey, he... uh, hey, Callum, you think uh, before Cole spends that time with Vince, he says, it's boss time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Oh, I hope that you all leave your comments below and tell us what you think are the best and the worst in these categories. Stay tuned because part five is coming up next, and this is where we get into the nitty gritty of the wrestlers. We will talk the best and the worst of the heels, the baby faces, the newcomers, the best and worst superstar of the year, and so on and so forth. So stay tuned. That's coming up next. 